Hi, everybody. Justin Henderson with Recruit Military. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today uh, in my Vetonomic series. For those of you who have listened a few times, uh, welcome back. For those that your first time, just a quick overview of Vetonomics. It's the economics of veteran hiring. In my background, I'm a former Marine. I spent six years in the Marine Corps Reserve, motor transport operator, and automatic rifleman. I've been here at Recruit Military for almost 16 years, and I have a degree in economics, and it's something that I'm passionate about, uh, both uh, as an academic and as a professional in what I do. So really the goal about Vetonomics is to educate transitioning military members, veterans looking for employment, and also corporate America. You know, one of the th jokes we have here, the only person worse than um, transcribing military experience into corporate knowledge uh, than the veteran is corporate America. It's like the both of us are, are having a hard time. We're more of ships passing in the night. Uh, and so really the goal here is to really educate both parties on, hey, we know you as a corporate hiring authority, you want to hire military, um, but how do you do it? And one of the things, uh, really what I'm excited about is having Dion uh, on the show today uh, after I break down the jobs report, Dion uh, is at Fort Lee, and he's part of the transition team. He manages the transition team. He's former Army uh, Sergeant First Class, uh, NBC guy, if you're, if you're old like me, or CBRN, chemical operator, uh, if you're one of the newly transitioning members. So what I want to do now is just break down into the jobs report and uh, go from there. So here we have the, uh, the Vetonomics uh, job report for um, – March of 2022, and I just want to go through a couple of the numbers. It's it's really interesting as we go through this because of uh, one we expected we expected a large growth uh, in February. It's kind of what we saw uh, in January. I think some economists were concerned because January was such a huge bump of uh, close to 700,000 jobs. Um, and uh, looking at Feb February's numbers, uh, it's really good. You know, it's really kind of what we're expecting uh, or hoping for. And really what went down is the unemployment rate. If you recall last month, it was 4% nationally, which we had close to 7 million people looking for employment. And we had 11 million job openings. Uh, now we're down to 6.3 million people looking for employment. You know, one of the questions I received before the uh, show went live was, hey, that, that uh, 6 million people looking for work, will that number ever be zero? And no, the number never will be zero because there's a natural transition. There's people graduating tech school, high school, college, leaving the military, uh, transitioning from job to job. Uh, maybe it's a parent entering the workforce again. So you have all of these people that are naturally transitioning in moments of time. What economists think is that really 3% unemployment rate is about that, that average of just transitioning. So when you see 3.8% for a national unemployment rate, that means we're getting very close to that just transitioning uh, from one role to another, from academia to corporate America and by vice versa number. Uh, so there's naturally some people that just aren't employed at any point in time. What's really interesting is we went from 3.5% uh, to 3.2% of veteran unemployment. And what that means to give you an idea, it's about 285,000 veterans looking for employment across the country. So when you break that down, divide it by 50, just to be all things equal, that gives you an idea of number of veterans looking for employment in your state. Now, if you're in Florida, Texas, California, New York, North Carolina, where these major installations of military installations are, of course, you have larger numbers of military. And if you're a state that doesn't have a major installation, military installation, you may have less. But just to give you an average, divide it by 50. Uh, really interesting was the jobs report. Like I said, Amazing to see 678,000 new jobs created. Um, what's really, what I've been looking at is, can we get that labor force participation rate up to 63.4 again? Right now, we're at 62.3% for labor participation, so people that want to work, that are working. And that number was at 63.4% uh, before COVID. So we're getting real close. 1.2% left uh, to cover down. And that'll be covered down in the summer months. By August, we'll be darn close to where we were. Uh, all things considered, unless something major uh, changes that direction, which could be what we've seen several times with COVID and also what we're all probably, especially as veterans, falling on the news right now. 
Um, employment population rate, another interesting fact. Um, we're at 59.9%, 612 in February of 2020. Again, we're just about 1.2, 1.3 points away from full employment as, an, as, a, as a country, all things equal. Um, we're at 6.3 million people looking for work compared to 5.7 in February 2020. So that puts you at 600,000 person delta between the two. But if you look at the numbers, they don't align like they did pre-COVID. Um, those are the deaths of uh, people that could work in the workforce that can't. There's new people, of course, in these two years. They've graduated high school, graduated college, gradu left the military, whatever it may be, that are currently looking for employment. So there's a lot of factors into that number. But just to give an idea of kind of the, the juice we have left, at, left in this economy. Uh, telework. Uh, read something interesting yesterday. You know, we're down to 15.4% last month for telework. Right now, we're at 13%. Uh, as you can see, I'm a teleworker. I have been for years. Uh, as a placement specialist, somebody that deals with a lot of people looking for employment, we're finding those professional services. If that person was remote for over a year, um, they found a way to be to optimize their life in a remote workforce, and they're not looking to come back. So you hiring authorities that have roles that maybe were remote, and you're trying to bring it back in, you're having a hard time capturing talent, you may want to readdress that remote role or a blend. Uh, as people are moving from chasing them, running up the ladder as fast as they can to really focusing on culture and work-life balance, at least that's what we're seeing on our side. You know, we have a, we have a uh, statement that culture eats strategy for lunch. And right now in this economic environment, that's what we're seeing. Veterans are looking for a good culture, servant leader, and really a mission bigger than them. So having that flexibility really does help. Here's what's really interesting when you look at us going from that uh, service economy pre-COVID to the uh, product economy, economy of COVID. You know, pro service economy was going to Disney World, going to uh, water parks, going to restaurants, hotels, movie theaters, the whole thing. And product economy is buying everything, right? And that's uh, going through Amazon and Walmart and all their distribution centers. So we see that leisure and hospitality is up. They were the biggest gain, 100, almost 180,000 jobs. They're still down 1.5 million. And when you look at that number I stated earlier, we don't have the populace to fill those roles. We don't. Um, healthcare is continuing to steadily grow back, 64,000. They're still down 300,000. Uh, that could be a lot of, um, in, uh, when, you're, when an industry is pressured the way this one has been the last two years, there's a lot of uh, inventions come through and a lot of creative ways to solve problems as they were in that, in that manpower crunch. So they may not need that extra 300,000 back. We'll see. Manufacturing's up 36,000, still down 178,000. You know, what I'm seeing there, again, it's going from the type of equipment that's being made, the type of products that are being manufactured. And also we're finding that uh, the biggest delta right now in manufacturing is on the trade side. Uh, manufacturing is dying for, um, uh, they're dying for technical talent. And we'll talk about that later. What's really interesting is construction, 60,000 new jobs. They're still down only 11,000. They're the ones that are back to normal. But remember, there is legislation that is going to make construction boom this spring and summer. So if you're wanting to get in the construction industries, now's the time. There's going to be a big, I'm from Pittsburgh. We had, a, we had a bridge collapse just a few weeks ago, um, a major thoroughfare. So we, we understand that our infrastructure needs to be rebuilt. So looking forward to seeing that growth. And again, it, it drives the economy. What's really, really interesting, service economy to product, transportation, warehousing, up another 48,000. There are over 660,000 people in the last two years. That shows Right, we've gone from that service dance, monkey dance, entertain me to give me stuff to play with and, and entertain myself. Uh, so it's been really interesting to watch that. Um, the uh, we're at, uh, and then average earnings. These are private payroll, so like salary broke down to hourly, hourly thirty one point thirty one dollars and fifty eight cents. Production and non supervisory roles, so manufacturing, production, non supervisory. The average is six twenty six point. $26.94. And that's been a 5% uh, increase and 5.2% uh, increase year over year. So 
what I personally like seeing as a blue collar guy. I was raised blue collar carpenter family. Uh, father was a steel worker. Grandfather was a coal miner. It's great to see those rates go up. So uh, congratulations to those that work in those roles. Um, workforce. This is something that I get consistently is they compare our experience to kind of like university. Hey, we have a university recruiting program and we have a veteran recruiting program. And I explained that, you know, hey, the majority of the, almost the majority of the populace has gone through university. So they have an understanding of that. It's a collective understanding. But only 5.6% of the U.S. workforce are, are, are veterans. So it's a much narrower focus and uh, path. So if an organization has a university recruiting program, almost 100% of the time, that person is, that is running that program, boots on the ground with that program, has attended and most likely graduated university. That's not always what's said for veteran programs. So I just, anybody on a hiring authority, somebody in the talent acquisition recruiting HR space, think about that uh, because you have a deeper understanding of that path and the values that were established and ingrained in you while you were going through that journey. Um, even getting a veteran that's not a recruiter, just getting a veteran to walk those paths, just put their feet on the yellow footprints of Paris Island. Having those people involved in the process will create that bridge and that, that understanding that should help your company, company hire more talent. So we already walked through these briefly, you know, kind of what, where the jobs were uh, this year. And you could see, right, hot leisure and hospitality is coming back. The uh, Omicron variant has passed through. Uh, mask regulations are leaving. Uh, you know, we're kind of coming back to the normal uh, entirely through the country. And so that's going to turn us right back into that, that entertain me uh, economy. And that's why you're seeing that. I will tell you all, as you go on your spring breaks and your vacations and your summer trips, do not be surprised if service is slower, if things are not the way they used to be. Because as we talked about in the previous conversation, hospitality is down 9%, almost 2 million people. So it's going to be a, a very similar summer to what we're used to two years ago, but it's not going to be as efficient, if that makes sense. I was able to find some really good information on the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics that I thought you may be interested in. So I wanted to share this, and then we'll get to Dion really fast. Um, the major occupational groups, veteran versus non-veteran. I was surprised by this. I, I guess I wasn't as much when I dug into it. Management, business, financial operations, we have a huge financial center. We spend a lot of money and we have to, we have to account for every nickel and penny. And then leadership is 101 in the military. That is ingrained in you, that you start as an E1. And uh, as you move through your military career, you will become a supervisor or leader. Uh, so that doesn't surprise me. The uh, transportation material, uh, moving of occupations, right? The um, we move bombs, bullets, band-aids, everything. And uh, so moving to this economy that we're in now only makes sense that, that they would lean on us. I could tell you from a Bradley Morris recruit military standpoint, we have so many companies coming to us looking for logistics, distribution center, warehousing talent because of the shift. And then maintenance, installation, maintenance, repair. The joke is we don't design anything in the military. We just break it, we fix it. So of course we're gonna have great maintainers. And really the, the change in the economy is going right through the trades. So the enlisted talent, those electricians, electronics, techs, mechanics, if you're listening, you're watching, you've got the high ground now. And uh, make sure that you work hard in your transition and Dion will help to make sure that you highlight your skill sets and what you can bring to the table because now's your time to shine. And we're here to help any way we can. Percentage of male, female. Uh, I just thought there was injuries. I was going through it. And um, again, wanted to walk through the professional services uh, female uh, related occupations, um, business finance, pretty similar office support, female base. But this is just something for you to review and look at, um, dissect it, think about what you want. But it was an interesting fact that I wanted you to see. Okay. Sean, did you say you can't see me? Sorry, everybody. Just making sure we have a technical glitch here. Okay, great. So uh, last one, labor force. I talked about this earlier, and this graph really makes it stand out. Uh, 
we have 5.6% of the U.S. labor force is veteran talent, where 94.4% are civilians. Totally good. But, but when you're thinking about a veteran recruiting program, you've got to think about that. That's a very small sliver of talent. Poignant, really good, what we, what we looked at earlier, logistics, leadership, business development, technical, really good at that. But it's a very, has to be a, a very intentional outreach for this populace. Um, and then also, um, I, I'm excited to talk to uh, Dion Albury today. Dion is the contractor installation manager, CIM, um, for Fort Lee in uh, just outside Richmond, Virginia. So he's running that TAP class. He's part of that uh, TAP class and getting transitioning professionals out the door and into corporate America safely and prepared. He's a retiree out of the Army, did over 20 years. He's, uh, he was an E7 when he retired. He was, uh, like I said, an MBC guy, nuclear, biological, chemical. Uh, that's back when I was in. Now it's CBRN. And uh, I'm excited to have Dion on the screen. Uh, we are just waiting for him to come live. We have a little bit of a technical difficulty. But as he's working on that, um, I'll let you know kind of what we're going to talk about. Being that um, we've, we've partnered with Soldier for Life, <clears throat> we have for about two years now, Marine for Life as well. Really, our goal is to help those transitioning professionals better understand um, how, to, how to transition correctly. You know, I reflect back when you think about promotion boards and you think about the time you spend on your military career developing those skill sets, studying. You know, for me back in the day, I had the, the red books the Marine Corps gave me that I had to read all the time. And I spent so much time developing myself and my career because it was so important. But when I, when I left the military, I just walked out the door. All right, now what? Didn't spend any time actually being thoughtful and intentional about my outreach. I said, corporate America needs to be more intentional about how they target us and how they communicate with us. Well, we have to be more intentional about how we move out. And this commander's fact sheet that Dion sent with me was a great list. It talks about, you know, really you want to start this 18 months out. And um, the reason that, you want to start out that far out, it's because you don't know what you don't know. Um, I, have a, I have a joke of mine, you know, I've been doing this 16 years, so I've got a, a couple stories under my belt. But we used to run these hiring conferences where companies would come in uh, on a Sunday night, we'd give them 12 resumes and they'd interview 12 people on a Monday. We stopped that years ago because we have this called the internet technology. But the funny part was the candidates, the veterans would come in, and they would listen to briefs, to presentations about these different companies and these different opportunities. And um, what happened was the, uh, uh, I would always walk into the room because Kraft would come visit and they would interview. And I'd say, all right, guys, guys and gals, everybody here, by show of hands, who here can't wait to leave the military and start making cheese? And everybody would laugh. And I would say, that's funny, but I tell you what, at the end of tomorrow, Several were going to come up to me and say, I cannot start, I cannot wait to work for this company. And that's kind of the you don't know what you don't know philosophy. So when Dion comes in, whenever you're ready, Sean, bring him on. Um, whenever Dion comes on, we're going to kind of talk about it. We're going to explore uh, this fact sheet and this transition uh, from 18 months out to walking out the front door. What's the right thing to do? You know, um, one of, the, one of the points that came out when Dion and I met uh, earlier this week to talk about today was, it was, you know, we came to this point that um, you can't, you know, in the military, it is ingrained as us as we become supervisors and leaders to have this unfallible belief in our decision-making capabilities, right? Because a lot of the times, if you're that senior NCO, or that commanding officer, the buck stops with you. So you have to make that decision. You need to stand by it for the good of your troops and your sailors and your Marines. And that can bite you when you're transitioning out because you have to remember, you don't know what you don't know. You've never been out in this space before. And if you were, it was four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 30 years ago. And the speed of technology, a lot's changed. So what we say is um, we, you don't know what you don't know. So you want to come in with those EI, E101, just big, bright, blue eyes open, saying, I am Johnny Five, short circuit, need more input, right? Give me more input so that you know. Uh, so many times you talk to that one friend 
or five friends or three friends that got out and went and did their path. You say, well, hey, I was in their MOS. I stomped in the same sand. That's what I'm going to go do. But you just don't know. You know, a lot of people come out from leadership positions and say, I want to do a project management because, hey, that's what I did in the military. Manage multiple, I had multiple balls in the air and I was able to coordinate that and make it work. But the difference between most, most project management in the civilian world and project management in the military or leadership in the military is a project manager sits behind the desk a lot because they've got a lot of information they have to process. So when you're a leader and a boots on the ground leader and you sit down in a project management role, after a few months you go like, hey, you know, I want to be with the troops. I want to be with my team. And you realize maybe I'm not that construction project manager. Maybe I'm the superintendent. Maybe I'm boots on the ground making things happen that way. And that's why we say that 18 month mark really, really helps because you can explore those. Also, another fact you want to talk about is how to present yourself. What mediums do you use? You know, me personally, I love LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn, you can put your, you can build your LinkedIn profile, your different billets, your different rates, the different things you've done in the military. And you can then, um, start to engage companies that are located where you want to relocate. Or if they're located near the base that you're stationed, you want to stay there, do that too. But while you're active duty and in the military, you have that ability to communicate with people, uh, not as a job seeker, but as a military person, just looking for a little help, low information. And people love helping people. We really do. So if you build that LinkedIn profile 18 months out, you start posting a little bit about what you're doing in the military and kind of what your goals are and aspirations of getting out. Uh, You're going to get more feedback. People are going to come to you naturally and offer advice and help. And that's going to help you understand, killer, to know what you don't know, right? Hey, um, oh, I never thought about getting into uh, food manufacturing. Or I never thought about getting into sales. Hey, I'm a military police and I'm just going to go be a police officer. Well, no, as as a MP, you have to defuse situations, right? You have to be able to um, come up with creative solutions and influence people through communication. So, hey, maybe maybe business development really is right for you. So there's a lot of different options here that this 18-month program can help you with. Sorry, I was just looking at a couple of comments to see if there's some questions to uh, answer. Sean, can we get uh, Dion on yet? Sorry, everybody. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty off uh, Fort Lee, getting everything going. But um, another point, too, is you know when you're going through your transition, um, I, I've, I've moved away from the experience-based conversation, and I've turned it into a skill-based conversation. So what I mean by that is when, you, when you're looking at your resume and you're writing down your experience, right? Because a job description says, I need this experience and your resume writes what experience you have. Really break down what skills you gained from that experience. Because those skills is what you want to highlight in your conversation. Because if you're transitionally out of the military, you're not going to have the experience they want, right? Because the job description they built was from somebody working inside that facility, inside that office, inside that space that said, yep, this is what you do inside this space. So you need experience with this. They don't always go, okay, what's relatable? And in this market, skills will play. Skills get a better look at it. So if you're able to, yes, have the traditional resume written, but also have that ability to talk about your skills. So a... um, You may have like an aviation machinist mate that works on a flight line in a aircraft carrier. They're going to talk about their experience with planes, with troubleshooting, uh, hydraulics, pneumatics, landing gear, whatever it might be. Uh, But that's not really going to correlate to that manager in a manufacturing plant. But if you talk about balancing a barrel pump or you talk about some of the actual, hey, chasing wires, firing fried boxes, or if you talk about the the production line of a flight line. Hey, there are planes trying to take off behind this plane. There are planes trying to land. Uh, They get a better understanding of how your skills match up with what they're looking for. 
also, there's another tool. Uh, Google reached out to us about four or five years ago and said, hey, we want to make an MOS translator on our website. And they used RecruitMilitary.com's job board and candidate in profile information to understand what MOSs correlate with what jobs in corporate America. So now, if you are in that 18 month or before, if you're in that where you should be planning about what you want to do in your next career, uh, I highly recommend going to Google jobs for veterans near me. Just type that in Google. The MOS translator will pop up. Now, of course, it's tech. It's not human. So there's going to be some, ah, I don't think I'm a fit for that, or hey, maybe that doesn't correlate, but it's going to be darn close, a lot closer than you just trying to figure it out yourself. And if you go in there and you type your MOS, it'll populate jobs that match for you. Um, so what you want to do is um, you want to be able to look at those and help kind of open your mind. You go, okay, well, I didn't think that that was something I could do. Or I didn't think I was quite qualified for that. Maybe I need to look into that. Uh, also, you're looking for company names, right? You didn't, you don't know what companies are out there that are right fit for you. I'll tell you the big thing for me, the big takeaway the last two years, uh, that whole culture, each strategy for lunch mantra that we talk about is medium, small, medium sized companies are having a, on a much larger stage than they used to be, meaning pre pandemic. As we were watching the stock market grow and certain companies taking larger and larger percentages of that marketplace, we started running towards it. The tech companies, the finance companies. And we, we, we wanted the, we enjoyed the notoriety. We enjoyed the, the fast pace of it all. And we felt we, we enjoyed the challenges. But when COVID hit, what we realized was Hey, maybe I don't need to go to that big organization. Maybe it's good if I go to somewhere where I am a department head because it's a small organization and I can put my leadership to work right away. Um, or, hey, you know what? I am a more, vi I'm a value technician because I'm only one of five. I'm not one of 500. And so I, I also employ you to take that look too. It's just because you, even, you don't know the name of the company or if that job title, doesn't resonate right away, take a look at it. You know, take a look at the company, look at their mission, look at their leadership, look where they're located, right? Because location can be critical, especially if you've traveled a lot for, for the military and you said, you know what, I'm heading back home. Or hey, household six, the spouse has been following me forever and it's, it's their turn to lead the charge. And so you have, a, you have a defined destination of where you're gonna transition to. Use that MOS calculator, um, Use that translator, MOS translator, to help you better understand your qualifications and how they can work. Um, it looks like, you know, I'm trying to respect everybody's time. We're at 1.30. We're going to give Dion just a few more minutes to see if he can get up and running. Uh, if not, we'll have to maybe postpone this to a, uh, a different conversation. But um, I do see that Brad's watching. So thanks, Brad, for listening in. I would tag in if I could. But uh, thank you so much. Looks like Dion's trying to get in. Okay. Well, hey, I apologize, everybody, that we weren't able to get him onto the, uh, the call today, but we'll regroup and get it. But really what I want everybody, so on the, on the transitioning military side, and by the way, recruitmilitary.com, bradley-morris.com, they're just two, two uh, free opportunities for, for you to go through your career transition and also kind of learn what's out there. What I like about recruitmilitary.com you can use your MOS to go find employment too. So again, that's a really good way to figure out what you don't know, right? And learn. Uh, I really, really, really um, implore you to do that. With 16 years of doing this, um, I found that if you focus on your values, you focus on your drive, right? What's going to make you, what are the challenges are you going to really get excited about? And what type of mission are you going to get excited about? Everything else is going to fall in, fall in place. The money will be there. Um, so many people put the money first because we all have to get paid. We all have family to take care of, or we just have bills to take care of. But what I find is that if you focus on the why first, 
the career is going to be there. The money's going to be there. Uh, LinkedIn put out a veteran opportunity report in 2020 or 2019. I can't remember right around there, but you can look it up. LinkedIn veteran opportunity work opportunity report. LinkedIn veteran work opportunity report. And it talks about how all of us have, to, almost all of us had to take a step back when we transitioned out. But within three years, we had bypassed our peers. Um, it was like over 70% bypassed their civilian peers. I know for me personally, it took me three years after leaving the military and graduating college to find the job. And honestly, I was an enlisted E4. Um, and I didn't get, I didn't, and I was motor T. I was a truck driver without a CDL, and I didn't want to be a truck driver. But I knew the discipline and the drive that I had, if somebody would just give me a shot, they'd have to kick me out of the office. And uh, here we are, almost 16 years, and I'm still here. So that's what I'm talking about. Really focus on that. Focus on the why and what's going to get you going and really what's going to drive you because that's what's going to make you happy. And being happy is more productive. More productive means the career is going in the right path. Uh, again, it's Justin Henderson. I, I truly do apologize we couldn't get Dion online. You know, technology is great till it doesn't work. I promise we will come back at this and have him here again um, at, so we can go through this because he really is one of the best out there as far as communicating. Um, because Dion was as part of that issue too, it took him five years to find this role. You know, he he had a couple jobs. He, you know, what we all did. Hey, this seems like this is the right way to go, and the money's there. But through time, realized that that wasn't his calling and that wasn't his why. And now he's at the right place, and he's happier than ever. So I really, really do hope um, we'll be able to get him on camera here, either next month or a month after, and really drive through this. But you know, what I wanted to get across as far as those transitioning militaries, there's, you can't start too soon. You can't. And you want to refine that resume through experience base, but also outlining skills. Uh, you want to make sure that any, any type of hard numbers you can put in, you put in to quantify your experience. But also just remember when you get into the tap, just think about the boards. Think about promotion boards and all the time that you spent on that and how much you prepared. You want to give it the same, it's only four or five days. You want to give it complete attention because you don't know what you don't know. And you want to get in there. Don't, don't put on those decisive blinders, right? That we are taught, like once you make your decision, you need to execute because it's the will, it's the right thing for your team, which it normally is. This is about you. You need to have a 360 radius aperture. Listen, ears open, antennas up because that's going to help you land better. You know, um, that's going to help you get out there better and hit the ground running. Now, if you have any questions, I see a bunch of comments coming through. I'll get on there and I'll, I'll answer them best I can. But if you have any questions that I wasn't able to address today, please uh, shoot me an email, jhenderson at recruitmilitary.com. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, you can uh, connect with me there, message me. Happy to answer any questions, have any conversations I can do to help the team. Because really our goal here is to help you transitioning military, you veterans looking for employment to better um, vocalize and put out your experience so it's easily translatable to the corporate community. And also for corporate America, please reach out to me as well. Anything I can do to help translate those experience-based job descriptions into a skill-based one that can target veterans, I'm happy to help. Again, it's Justin Henderson here at Recruit Military. Just a few minutes over, but hey, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. Uh, look forward to hearing from people. Uh, look forward to reading your comments and getting Dion on maybe next month. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you.